Welcome to Seged, Hungary. It's April, beginning of April 2024, and it feels like more end of June or something. At least today. It's a pretty warm day, sunny. Upper 25, I would say, degrees Celsius. Slight wind from northeast, maybe two to three meters per second, as forecasted. In other words, perfect conditions for flying. Sadly, just today, because yesterday we had like overcast, alto stratus clouds, and sun was just occasionally peeking through. Uh, so the thermals were sparse and weak and that made it for a very challenging flying but today it's pure joy we are looking at top 12 pilots that qualified for the flyoff and they have a bit less than two minutes to start Despite the challenging conditions yesterday, the gap between the number one and number 12 on the score list was only around 140 points. And we had seven flights for the qualifying rounds. So that means you had to score about 980 at worst for each flight in order to qualify for the fly-offs. So this is the difficulty level of this competition. Definitely much higher compared to what we had in Greece two weeks ago, for example. So now I expect low starts maybe under 50 meters but I also expect most of the pilots to be just tiny dots in the sky in maybe three to five minutes so we'll see how much we can actually see I think wind to change direction slightly right now and let's see what the pilots will do so some attempts over the camp very low and last few seconds more power to see if that will actually make the thermal unstick. Now let's see what happens. Switch to manual focus first. And let's see what David will do. Is the lowest with the V tail Ultima. Not sure if this is enough. But it's now all or nothing, a zero or hero. So it's definitely possible to just go across the whole field at this height and hoping that there's something that would unstick the thermal but I don't think that's quite enough I think it's going home It was 
just missing maybe five or ten meters. And that's the difference because if you look at the rest of the gaggle, right there about that direction, uh, I hardly see what I'm actually recording. Just clouds are my reference. As I said, it's not even three minutes in and they're already pretty high, pretty far. And that happened from, I don't know, 20, 30 meters maybe. So now the main task is actually not losing sight of your plane and avoiding the sinks. Because strong thermals also bring strong sinks. And this is what happened in the last flight of the qualifying round that I was in. It was extremely interesting. So we were waiting for the start and the wind died down for maybe 30-40 seconds and then started blowing again from a slightly different direction. And most of the pilots read that as a thermal starting or uh, climbing in a certain direction and we all went there and we were all down in like three minutes. It was actually a sink, it wasn't a thermal. I think the pilots are now so far downwind that they're already coming back uh, at a safe height, but still coming back it means that they, they will have to find another thermal for the remaining time. I think they have 10 minutes to go. No one is really low. I think the lowest one is. Let's see if I can find him. This guy here. So, in a sense, this kind of perfect weather makes for a very boring video. I'm sorry guys. So maybe it's now time to start looking for the next thermal. If 
you see that most of them came back and are now at least two of them are now under 100 meters but I don't think that's anything critical yet So I can get the ground in for reference. They are this high. And they're slowly coming overhead. It was a bit annoying. I had to shoot them straight in the sun. But you know how they say, there's always thermals in the sun. So let's see if it works for them. Where's the next thermal? Okay, so from boring this suddenly started to become interesting. Wind has picked up a bit, which I guess is good news for them. spread out quite a bit and so far I don't see any good lift it's not going down either but they're getting blown downwind Okay, something started happening. A bird has joined the gaggle. That's always a good sign. looks like now air started working again except maybe for that low guy what's he gonna do I don't think he quite got the beginning of this thermal but the wind really increased now And it died down again. So look like these two guys decided to go for the whatever score they can get. Because I'm not sure there's anything from this height till the landing points. Um, looks like he won't even make it. Oh, 
or maybe he's trying. That's again the zero or hero situation. So he figured out he can't get back to the point anyway, so it makes sense to at least try to gain some height. But maybe this guy, he will make it to the point. No, no, that's outside of 75 as well. No, there's another one at the point, actually. Okay, at least he got the landing. And there's another one coming back. He also won't make it. And I hear some servo noises just behind me. Oh, that's very close. Okay, that's five meters above me. Okay, one minute to go if I heard correctly. Good. Where's the rest of them? There's a rabbit running over the field. And I see at least one that made it. And most of them are just walking down the field. 30 seconds to go, so one guy made a full time. Okay, so it was definitely less boring than I anticipated. Seven, six, five. Okay, great. Let's wait for flight number two. So we have two minutes to start. And some guys are not even back yet with their planes. I guess they have a spare plane on the line that they can use. Maybe a few words more on the weather. Hungary in April can still be very close to winter. So we had competitions here in April or May that were like just barely above zero, very windy, uh, dark, even uh, overcast, very unpleasant. But this kind of weather is definitely an exception. So it's summer-like temperatures and only slight breeze. Very unusual. Not sure if we can expect this kind of weather to continue in the future. I'm pretty sure there are different opinions whether this kind of weather is good or not good. I guess in the narrow view of things it's definitely good. I mean we can fly and enjoy it, but in a grand scale of things nature is not yet used to it. So, now the guy that made full time can afford to go a little bit higher, play it safe. And the others, they still have to fight. 
I mean, I think only three or four pilots actually scored in this first fly-off. So it's still pretty much open what happens uh, in the next two. Twenty seconds. Twenty on the hand. Let's follow this guy. Just a random pick. Over me and going downwind. Where is he? Here. Okay, motor stopped. Uh, let's see what we have here. Mostly above me. Which is actually a bit annoying to record. And again in the sun, of course. I only see a few, where are the rest? Oh, so there are two guys at the end of the flight line. Camp. Okay, this is interesting. Much more spread out than before. And this tells me that conditions from the start were interesting enough that different people read it differently. So the game now here is climbing this gentle thermal, sticking with it and hoping that you gain enough height that you can actually come back. And now even the lower one looks like he centered it properly and is now climbing. Very nice.
no pretty far. So I have decided to continue with the thermal and like it looks like the other one wants to return or come back upwind. Meanwhile, I hear some servos and it looks like someone is already landing. Looks like this time they went for the points. And where's the next one? Okay. Someone's here, also pretty close, pretty low. Wind is picking up again, I can feel it. And let's see what that means for him. I think he's trying to find something that got unstick by the camp. Looks like he got it. Interesting, wind has died down completely now. What does that mean? Now two planes here, almost directly above me. And again in the sun. And the third one is joining, so it looks like it's at least something of a lift left, and there's a fourth one at the top. Could be that I'm now standing in this terminal, with no wind at all. And again, directly in the sun, of course.
some nice lens flare there. I don't know, let's see what others are doing so that someone landing. If I heard correctly, we have five minutes to go. Oh wow, so someone is over the runway, really, really high. Not sure if I can even get him. About there. Okay, looks like he made some good decisions. To have a relaxing, enjoyable flight. And the other four, five are still in the sun. Yeah, I see shadows on the ground around me. There's one closer to us, still trying to gain some height. I think he's gaining slowly, enough for the time that remains. Now what remains is a landing pattern and landing. Oh, wind has picked up. So some reserving height is now very welcome. There is the loop. Someone driving past me. Thirty seconds. So, 
a lot more people now made the flight, made the full time. Okay, this was fun. Now the third and last fly-off, providing that all goes well. And on topic of things going well, it's surprisingly smooth competition. No issues, no mid-air collisions, only a few radio issues there over the hangars and the that antenna that's over there, but no crashes this time. So, very successful weekend. And also in general I find F5J events going very smoothly. I mean, everyone is now well versed in what they have to do, either from organizer perspective or from competitor perspective. Everything's running really smoothly. Thirty seconds. Another low start, no one is really going high, except one. There's one really low, let's see what he will do. This is again a zero or hero moment. Uh, let's see if this is enough. But looks like it's just fly over the corridor to the point. Or maybe not even that. No. Also, as you can see, this is active airport. I hear there's lots of training flights going here, going on here. They have single and twin uh, airplanes, twin engines. So you can do all the basic training, uh, multi-engine, probably some IFR as well. Nice airport. Nice big open field. Cheap place to stay, good food, cheap food. suitable for many different kind of activities. I, mean, I even saw today um, winch lounge paragliding. First time I saw that ever. Apparently that's now a thing. Well, looks like the guy that picked the good start height now knew something that these guys didn't see.
that's not enough. What's happening elsewhere? So there's a nice gaggle here. topic of this flight training, one thing that really made me jump yesterday, I didn't know, but they were also doing the engine failure imitations on takeoff. And it was so sudden, the drop of engine noise when you expect it to continue. I have immediately jumped up and checked what's going on, in case there's a real emergency. I did some of this flight training in the past as well. I have a PPL, but I didn't pursue it further. Nowadays I mostly satisfy my thirst for flying on a flight simulator as well as with F5J. So this group now looks pretty safe if this thermal holds. Ten minutes to go. I don't think there's actually anything else going on. Just this group is really high. Now this almost looks like the kind of boring flight I anticipated from the start. We just need to wait the remaining time. I think they will now stick to this thermal for as long as possible. Because there isn't that much wind that it would be difficult to come back. And it's better to stay up high in a safe altitude. It looks like they have now spread apart. I only see one from the group of five initially. But okay, there's another one, but it's 
good 600 meters plus I would say so really nothing to see here not sure if I can even get him about here somewhere there yeah it's really really high that high so not much going on I guess let's wait Looks like some pilots are looking to the northwest. Where are they? Oh yeah, another really really high. Okay, maybe I can find him by that contrail. Under the contrail and the plane is there somewhere yes so another good flight and they have what five minutes to go yeah this is what I anticipated from the start Some boring waiting time. So now I have no clue who actually scored what. And we have to wait for the final prize giving ceremony to see who did best. Try now to follow one all the way down to the landing. Challenge now is to not overspeed or overstress your plane while diving down. So 
to either find a good thing or employ flaps strategically or maybe do something more stupid like side slip or some acro flying on the way down just for fun Yeah, this is what I was talking about. Someone has really squeaky flaps. That's the end. Okay. Let's now see the results. this competition I'm very glad that you are here still the end of the competition congratulations for everybody and first of all I would like to thank the hard work for the timekeepers some of them still are here I would like to thank you the hard work for Barnabas Hayesh for the sound thank you very much for Gerg Kerestes for the Computer work, get there. Thank you, Christo, for helping me. Uh, I hope so. Everybody enjoyed Saged, enjoyed the weather, and also enjoyed the food. So we start with the juniors. Uh, the third place of juniors is Vilmos Chomos Hungary. Oh. Second place, Vostrad Nikolas Czech Republic. <laughs> The next 
next round is uh, 60 plus uh, competitors, 65 plus, yes, uh, the third piece, uh, Zoltan Borgo, Hungary. <laughs> Senior competition. First place, Christoph Varga, Hungary. Eleventh place, Andras Seri, Hungary. Tenth, Vostel Vaslibi. Ninth, Dutchan Yiri. Eighth, Jordan Silviu. Gala Marco. Sixth place, Disney Primoz, Slovenia. Köszönöm, hogy akkor már tudok 